Welcome to the Arts Consortium's May membership meeting. We are so glad to have you here. we got a lot to talk about, so we're going to get right into it. As you've noticed, I'm the one introducing our membership meetings right now because our president, Rita Verde, who we thank with all of our hearts, is stepping away for a time from the Arts Consortium board. Uh, so we want you, if you see her, please thank you from all of us for everything that she has done for us. Uh, she has served as president for about three years now. And Rita has been with us through some really positive growth, and she has put her heart and soul into our organization, so we really want to, you to, to help us thank her. And like she used to do while she was uh, joining us here, I want to invite you to become a member. I want you to invite your family and friends who are art supporters to become members of the Arts Consortium because it's really the easiest way that you can support what we do. And that money goes to provide for all of the initiatives that we do here at the Arts Consortium to make the arts accessible to everybody in Tulare County. If uh, you are an artist, then I encourage you to go into our website and look up the Artist Master List. It's on the landing page, and all you have to do is enter your name, contact info, and medium, and we can add you to this, uh, this great list that's growing. It's beautiful, and I keep hearing that people are actually getting jobs from this, this list. So please join up if you haven't already. And for our organizations, we have what's known as Cultural Directory. Not only is that published in our Watermark magazine, but we're also working to get that on our website. So, again, artists, artists master list, organizations, cultural directory. Join the fun. It is getting warmer, but our last first Friday was still kind of chilly, and we still had a little bit of rain scare. So, uh, if you didn't make it out, then uh, you missed a great show. We had the My Voice Media Center showing all their work, showing their songs, showing their poems. And, uh, and we had a really, really good time, and we invite you to our next First Friday event in June. Uh, thank you to all the venues who participated. We couldn't have such a meaningful event without all of you, and uh, we, we hope to see everybody out again next month and invite your friends and family. If you're interested in becoming a member of our Taste the Arts Committee to help us figure out what our community wants to see and what we should uh, where we should put all of our resources into, then please join us on May 17th at 5.30 p.m. here at 808 North Court Street or the Oval Park. Our and watermark contest is coming to an end this month, so if you haven't submitted an art piece yet, please, please make something. <laughs> or take a picture of some of the most recent work you've made, send it to us. All we need is a picture. If we love it and it's not the highest resolution, we will take a picture ourselves. We'll come to you uh, or we'll set up an appointment to meet you somewhere and we will take a good picture and feature that as our art contest winner for our 2023-2024 magazine. If you're interested in being a sponsor for our magazine, please let us know. We have all these wonderful levels. We'll put your name and logo and uh, business information on our uh, Taste the Arts marketing. And uh, it'll, you'll really, really help us make our event uh, better and better and better every year. So uh, if you're interested in sponsoring, just let us know. Other news at the Arts Consortium. We have our fence up. If you haven't been around, our fence is beautiful. It is brand new. And the city has gone above and beyond to make sure that we are comfortable and that we are safe. So uh, thank you to the city of Visalia and everyone there who works um, for, for the little people like us. <laughs> Our move-in date for the Self-Help Enterprises lofts at Fort Visalia has changed to the end of October. And so we will more than likely be here for Taste the Arts and we'll be able to join you all for the for the actual day of and it won't be until after that when we will actually move into the building so it won't be until 2024 when we have that beautiful beautiful lineup of studios all the way down oak avenue and uh we're we're looking we're looking forward to it quite a bit 
our City of Visalia Community Art Grant has been revamped and it is wonderful. In my opinion, it's probably the most accessible that our, our grant application has ever been. There are no matching funds. Um, For-profit events will be considered and uh, it, it actually allows for individuals, so using your social security number, uh, as well as organizations to apply. Uh, as long as your event has a strong art focus, then you can you can apply for this grant up to $2,500. So we're really doing our best to make this as meaningful as possible. And like I said, until now, this has not been uh, as open and as accessible. So we really hope that you'll take advantage of it. If you have any questions, please let me know. But you're hearing about this first. You are our members, you are our loyal viewers. We really appreciate you. We want to hear from you. We want to know about you. We want to help you. So if any of these activities seem like they will benefit you, please let us know and we'll sign you up. We'll, we'll figure a way to get you involved. Today we're featuring the COS Printworks Club, and if you don't know about the COS Printworks Club, you're missing out. You may have seen them at the Arts Consortium's Taste the Arts in previous years. The last year, not only was their leader, Francisco Alonso, our Artist of the Year, but they also brought back from way long ago a steamroller printmaking session. So uh, back in, I think, 2016 maybe, we had that happen, and it wasn't until now that we were able to bring it back. So that was extremely exciting. They ran the whole thing. They made beautiful, giant prints. It was amazing. If you're even a little interested in the printmaking, then this is where you want to be. Go take a class at COS. Go take one of the printmaking sessions with Francisco Alonso. Or if you're already on campus doing something else, join the Printworks Club. Become part of this movement. Check out this great armadillo that they made. They just showed it at uh, Porterville Cinco de Mayo Parade. Uh, it, was, <laughs> it was really cool. And, uh, and it's going to be showing in, in different places. So uh, I hope you enjoy this presentation. Uh, we really appreciate you. There's a whole lot going on at the Arts Consortium. It, it's somewhat difficult to condense it into these videos, but we do our best. And so if we're talking about something, it means that it's really important for us and hopefully important for you. But we also want to hear from you. We also really, really want to hear from you. So if you have any suggestions, any ideas, um, please, please let us know and, and become part of, our, part of our programming so that our community can have a stake in what we do. That's, that's what we're here for. So without further ado, please enjoy this COS Printworks Club and uh, check out what they're doing. It's really, really cool. Have a great day and uh, see you next time. Hi everyone, welcome to the Arts Consortium's May membership meeting. We are Printworks at COS Visalia and my name is Eden. I am the current president for the Art Club. Cheers. Uh, hi, I'm Thea Johnson. Thea Johnson, sorry. Um, I've been part of Printworks for like two semesters now and helped with a lot of the textures <laughs> mainly on the armadillo. Hello, I'm Eduardo Saola, and I'm part of the Printworks Club. I've been helping with the Mandela too, with the textures. Hi, my name is Christopher Echeverria. I've been the Vice President of Printworks since 2021. Well, COS Printworks is mainly about showing the community as well as other students and even younger, pe younger people that what we do um, how we are preserving the tradition of printmaking and how people use it to this day, not only in wood carving or um, printing on shirts. Or it's, we mainly try to inspire the community to get interested in this and maybe pursue into this field themselves. Our advisor is Francisco Alonso and our co-advisor is Matthew Vanquiel. Yeah, this is a great opportunity for any students to start networking mm -hmm. with other people. Uh, it's helped me a lot. Uh, I know there's a lot of students that don't even know about it. We, we, that's what we're trying to do is promote it as much as we can. We give them the opportunity to do it also. After the pandemic, it took a while to pick up like the interaction between us. We heard from two of our members 
that they were having like difficult time to talk to each other. Like after pandemic coming back to school, it was like so hard. So thanks to the art club, they were able to do that, to start like interacting. And we were just like opening the shop and see who shows up. Yes. <laughs> I remember the first event I went to was uh, Taste the Arts. And from there, uh, what I noticed, a lot of people started asking, what is it? And it was new to me at the time. And I was so surprised that people, that many people were interested in it. Because when I signed up for the class, I didn't, they said there's an art class open, printed. Uh, and I was like, printed? I was like, what's that? Like, and I thought it was like, print papers on a copier or something. And when I got in, well, I kind of I bowed for it. I just loved it. And since then, it, it's just been a growth. Like, uh, I've seen the class grow and grow. I proposed the Armadillo idea because I volunteer a lot with that in Porterville, the, the community in Porterville. So, I, for the Cinco de Mayo, I just connected. Like, pre making has like a large tradition with like Mexican culture. And everybody, like, if you, when you start like talking about printmaking, everybody says, oh, yes, but let's posada. And that's an icon. There's also like a tradition of like wooden toys over there. And it has all these patterns, all these colors. And I was like, we can achieve that through like printmaking. It would be like a good exercise for us to collaborate in one piece to break the ice between us, at least our art club. So that's how, like, I was like, Okay, we can get involved in the community, we can be present, we can get the, the pre-making out and like get everybody to know us, what we do, maybe get more people to enroll in the classes and make the parade prettier too. <laughs> Not all of us are taking the pre-making classes currently. So that's why we've been also moving kind of like slow with this project because there's like random schedules from everyone. Someone like, there was a girl who showed up like 30 minutes like from the drawing class. Cause I have like 30 minutes like and start like gluing like yeah. sides of the cardboard and then she left. <laughs> so whenever, like, I try to be constantly here. So people like whenever they have the time can like have access to and help us with this. Out of ranking of our projects, I've only been on like for a few. I'd say this was the most difficult one. Not too difficult, but it's mainly, again, as you mentioned, all the schedules, trying to align with each other. I feel like that was the main obstacle we dealt with. We had a sketch of like how we wanted the armadillo, but getting the hands on, like building it, we understood different things. First day, it was like, what are we doing? <laughs> We, we were just want, like cutting, just cutting cardboard, cardboard <laughs> measuring, <laughs> cutting it, calling it a day. Wasting cardboard, and then I ended up with one structure. Chris ended up with something different, and I think we were like, next, we yeah. next day we all like a couple of us had to come together, being like, this is how we're gonna do it. <laughs> this is the way we're doing it. And it was like a step, also like step by step. Like after seeing like one structure, people started like visualizing it too. Because mm -hmm. it was also like, what are you talking about? Like textures. I was like, yeah. it could be like something random. It's about how. And uh, the cool thing is, it was like having everyone's like textures ready to screen print and then start combining all of them, so we could have like different patterns. Instead of like explaining to our community what is like printmaking instead of like versus like seeing us in action it makes a big difference and i would say not only have we connected with like the younger parts of the community but also the older parts because they're like oh i remember doing this in high school yeah we made we basically made them go down a uh, memory lane and it's like they're still doing this? It's like, yep, they're still doing this. <laughs> just college level. I was just drawing the, the, the like sketch of the, of the shoe, 
frame shoe. It's gonna be for the Armadillo. We're trying to make some shoes for the Armadillo. Literally just today, it's the, we have to make feet for it. <laughs> Doesn't matter what it is, we gotta make feet for it. And Eddie and Chris were joking about it. It's like, why don't we just give them shoes? It's like, listen, if you do it, then it'll have shoes. Yeah. yeah. I was just throwing like, oh, we could wear court, uh, cut, uh, sun logs, sunglasses. And then, and then I said, oh, okay, yeah, Cortez is, and then <laughs> we, we ended up deciding on Cortez. I could not help with construction because one, I don't trust myself in measuring things. <laughs> they never come out well when I measure. So I mainly just stuck to doing patterns. In, that mainly took up my club hours of just trying to figure out a pattern, getting transferred to my screen, and then trying to figure out how many sheets of paper I'd have to do and that was my main bit it was just trying to see what patterns we could add what difference so then we aren't like uniformed of the same exact thing so they couldn't look as crazy as it looks now <laughs> I personally feel that it is important so that they know that we made this ourselves because I've seen in past, um, from past clubs or other clubs around that whenever like they do something, a lot of people are like, oh, you paid somebody to do it or you had somebody else do it. Um, but it's like, and I also had a couple people when I told them that Printworks was doing an armadillo, they're like, you're joking. You're having somebody else do it. It's like, nope. <laughs> We're, we come in at least a couple times a week and just start working on it. We, we've done this ourselves. I'd say you did a majority of the work. <laughs> <laughs> it did that. <laughs> but we, I feel that it is important for people to know that we put our time, our effort, blood, well not blood, <laughs> sweat into this. <laughs> At the website, the COS EDU, you click on the live students and it has clubs and organizations and they will find us there. Also on Instagram, but at COS Frameworks. Um, Francisco is the main printing teacher. He teaches both the screen printing and printmaking class. S and Matt does, he's, all, he does litho, yeah. But he also does painting, drawing, He's still in the art building. He's just, he does litho too. Yeah, and they are like our medium or communication within like uh, faculty and the dean. Whenever we need to request the facilities or like permits, like for transportation, uh, request our monies. And even if he can't be here for the meeting, he usually talks to at least one or two of us in the morning or when he can, whenever. He can talk to us about print works and is like, here's what needs to be talked about since I can't be here at that time and place. Um, bring this up in the meeting, talk about it, then um, get back to me if, um, either through the email that we send out at the end of every meeting or just tell them ourselves. Towards the end of the actual building and structure, Eden brought up, brought up that we needed texture to make this, you know, not look plain, as you can see. And it's like, well, what type of textures? Because I was confused what they wanted. Francisco just started on a pattern, saw the example, and then the rest of us just went off on our own and making our own patterns. Some of us made our patterns by hand. Some of them did digitally. Mm -hmm. um, either way, they both ended up being um, transferred to our screens, um, then transferred to the paper, cut up, stuck on and thankfully that was, that was another difficulty thing that we ran into because we didn't want it to have just one archway be the same yes and so we ended up having to cut up textures to um, put all over so then it's just not you know one simple thing for me as pretty makers um I was gonna say, like, what is like Mexican identity? And armadillo is one of the animals that is like a characteristic, like um, being from the desert, and it, it 
don't know, for me, it's like, as you mentioned, like it always moves forward, never steps back. So whatever happens, yes, it has like that hard shell and it is defeating everything, always moving forward. I like that symbolism of like the Armadillo. And also I think they're like amazing, like their mechanics in their bodies and the fact that they can just like roll, roll yes. <laughs> and also we made pre-making 3D. Yeah. It's not like flat, like we were capable to take it to another like dimension. How I felt about the Armadillo was usually people remember thing, things that are bizarre and they don't expect. You don't expect an armadillo. You don't. And which will have people who are like, who did this and why? <laughs> so then they know it's like, this was COS, his uh, print works who made this. Now that I think about it, armadillo, it, it just shows like uh, all these different things come together. Because each one of us have our own style. But now we're just throwing it all together in one. I feel like we've also gone bigger because we started using the steamroller for printing. So like this also making a <laughs> Had to go bigger way. somehow. Yeah, it's a large scale like print work. <laughs> we thank you for coming to the Art Consortium's May membership meeting. Again, we are COS Printworks. Um, mainly for COS students to join. For those who cannot join, join, remember you can also donate and that will help us get more materials so that we can um, try to provide more back to the community. Mm -hmm. Yes, you'll see us around in uh, community events. For sure, you'll see us at Tasty Arts. So we'll bring color and fun times. And if any of there's any like big event and if we get an email about someone asking us if we can come out and like print for a couple hours we could do it we just have to make sure we're all in an agreement of everything is met of this is what we need and we will bring this to you yeah, thank you to all our instructors yes and thank you to our work. instructors Especially Francisco, <laughs> <laughs> for dealing yeah. with us. <laughs> yeah, thank you, our like advisor, because uh, he is the one who gives us access to his shop. Like we wouldn't be able to create or produce like work without like having the resources and a place to meet yes. all together. I want to thank Evan too, because she yeah, she kind of made me made me uh <laughs> come out here too more often because I'm uh, kind of. Yeah, I'm going to hold it all together. Bye. <laughs>